So Vince, you are you are a legend. You're also what we, what we would call old school. Um, you come from you come out of uh, the hypnotist and NLP world from the early '90s, and then you worked with Ross Jeffries in the 2000s, and you went on to form your own company, which um, has I think it's um, right now it's Seduction Coaching. Seduction Coaching, that's correct. And yeah. and you're working with now Arash Dibazar. Yeah, we are such such a pair, such a dynamic together. But you know what? It goes even before that. Mm -hmm. I would credit my own personal progress and growth to older old school, all the classics, the Norman Vincent Peale, Brian Tracy, mm -hmm. Stephen Covey, Dr. Robert Schuller, Wayne Dyer, Jim Rohn, a lot of them passed away, but those guys were solid. And I love the idea of the word character. Mm -hmm. It's a word that's twofold. One meaning of the word character is well a rather colorful person with spices and you know oh that person is a character yes yes but also character in terms of backbone ethics and i think it's essential to create a balance between innovation crazy pink hair for example and you do your own form of innovation but also tradition and to sort what is best in each one of them we follow a lot of traditions that are completely messed up and make no sense, and we follow them like sheep, but we also miss out on priceless discoveries and understanding that people had thousands of years ago. Absolutely. And on the other hand, we innovate always new technology, and some of it is really starting to cripple us, while other aspects of innovation, we got to press even further forward because there's blessings in them. So. Yeah, that's absolutely absolutely right. Like um, the PUA knowledge that came out for most of the mainstream society in the early two thousands, for for you looking at that time when mystery method and all these sort of methods were becoming popular, you'd already been in the game of teaching and coaching men for self improvement for a long time. Did you see that whole movement as something rather absurd or or worrisome to you, or was it really good? for the society. We have, be, we have to be very honest with ourselves and we're all going through this phenomenal journey called life with very little instructions. Mm -hmm. And we all have assets and liabilities. Now, some guys only focus on their assets and uh, they are unaware of all the growth that's available to all of us, while others only focus on their liabilities. So with an open mind, one must not be overly critical and my own personal thing is always look for the beneficial element and keep an eye open you know for, to to be also a protector a real protector of loved ones and so on when stuff are being said out there in the community and it could be detrimental to a newbie uh, I like to step up and uh, Rush the Bazaar is even more efficient at that and uh, just put the brakes. But yeah. there's so much positivity. I did a crazy ass video yesterday while I was having sex, and of course, <laughs> I mean, you could not see me have sex. I, I mean, the, the end of course. I can't see you have sex. I want, I'm not paying for that product. <laughs> I want a but discount code. I mentioned like uh, the movie, you know, at the end I was, I was looking at myself in the camera while I was fucking the girl. Yes. And I, I, I mentioned American Psycho. And it was a very disturbing movie, but I remember seeing it at the time and I found one helpful element. The guy was not one of those supplicant guys who would constantly be wondering if his lovemaking was suitable for the girl. He totally was in himself. He'd be checking himself in the mirror. <laughs> Flexing. So at the time, I was like, that movie is fucked up. <laughs> that movie is disturbing, but here's one positive element. So, yeah, I think everybody, you know, came in, uh, pushed as much as they could and... Uh, in the end, I think there's there's the survivors, those who really were in it from the heart. Me, mm -hmm. I I done a lot of corporate coaching too, and even last year, a major cosmetic company, global, came back to me and they they offered me money like uh, beyond anything I ever gotten into or with their asking in pickup. But I did it briefly, and then I realized no, my heart is helping the guys, you know, with specifically women and then there's more and more a spiritual aspect to it because I mean we're spiritual beings having a 
human experience and everything we may attempt will come short unless there is a spiritual element. So I see we're heading there. Rush and I are doing an alchemy event where we tap in into some really powerful spiritual principles. So, Oh, this sounds amazing. I'd love to check that out. Vince, you, you've always come across, at least in your marketing, I've, I've seen a lot of your videos and a lot of your products, um, you've always come across as someone with a lot of sexual energy and a real passion for not just self-improvement, but specifically for seduction. It's, it seems like it's something that fascinates you. Now, a lot of guys, as they get older, some of them, myself included, I'm 37, um, and I got into pickup 10 years ago, but I've had a problem where I've become a little bit disillusioned with cold approaching and and um, the lifestyle of just chasing women, but you seem to be more passionate about it than ever. I'm wondering, um, do you have any tips or can you explain what you do for yourself to keep yourself motivated to to be active in the dating game? Even though I do know you're married, but I'm not quite sure what's going on with this, but I'm really curious about you and how you keep your energy up, your sexual energy and your passion for seduction. First, a very, a very genuine observation. Uh, you bring up some phenomenal points and truly bright questions. You know, I know you're a writer, but this is very refreshing. So, so, so thank you for phrasing it so well. And then honesty. I think that one, you mentioned some of those companies that came in the early 2000s. And sometimes marketing will take the best of all things, uh, the better of all things. and. Uh, it's easy also to just present ourselves out there as, hey, look at me, I'm getting late, I'm doing this, I have the solution, and so on. But I, I prefer and more and more to be genuine and also share not only the success, but the struggle. Mm -hmm. So what happened to me about a year ago, I encountered one of the final pitfalls. Of, co of course, there will be more. I mean, there will be like the later part of aging, reaching 60, 70, 80, and... Uh, and I like to pioneer and really help guys with anything that they will encounter. So I turned 47 and the thing that hit me was noticing my parents, this time showing significant a, uh, signs of aging. Mm -hmm. you know, they, they always were pretty upbeat. My, my father is super alpha, but I saw that it worried me a little bit. It made me feel a little bit of nostalgia. Of, Growing up, I grew up in a very loving family and environment, always very close to each other. So then I thought, okay, fear kicked in a little bit, and I thought, that's it. I need my own family. And I got married for the fifth time. Now, I know, for some guys, they may go, what a fuck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But I'm not the guy who will go and say, get married five times, that's the solution. But I'm a genuine healer, fascinating by that field, and I know that it's easy to come up with theories, but unless you live it and you got to live them at the edge, the strongest, you know, I love to be at all stages. I love to fall in love. I love to be stuck in a situation and not know what to do for a moment with it. And then I love to come out of a marriage and uh, I just came out of my fifth marriage. And what happened was fascinating. These are my findings. Oh my God, it's over. I fell for, uh, well, it's not really over. Everything mm -hmm. that's an end has a beginning and it's the beginning of the best ever so far. Mm -hmm. In, uh, it's been over for, uh, completed, I call it. I always pay attention to linguistics. Completed for about 100 days. Mm -hmm. And I slept with more 20 year olds. I've had more three and four sums than I've had <laughs> ever so far. And here's the most beautiful thing. Yeah. Uh, I did not go back out there or forward out there, better linguistic, with any intention other than openness. You know, yeah. I did not say, oh, fucker, I'm Vince Calvin, watch me fuck all those 20 year olds. Yeah. I didn't go like, oh no, it's over, I need a girl right now. Mm -hmm. I just stayed completely open and the rest happened by itself. So I'm excited because I'm about to deliver the best material ever and here are the higher learnings that came out of this experience. Because whatever happens to you in life, you gotta quickly go back after you honor maybe whatever you're feeling, you know, you don't wanna repress, but you also don't want to overly express and turn it into a pity party. Mm -hmm. You gotta ask yourself, what did I learn? So first thing that I learned is it doesn't matter how young, old, who you are, never buy into fear, not even 1%.
if you take a bottle of water and you put a tiny drop of poison, it's deadly. So right there, a little fear creeped in with regards to aging, and I bought into it, and it kind of misled me. The second thing that I have learned is uh, at any age, you know, it's all back to the basics. Why, what model of the world did you buy into? Because the world is interesting. It's constantly showing us that we can defy the odds. We can make things happen that even, uh, I mean, uh, remember the cell phones we had when the game was written? Yep, you had to Nobody put them in like a gun. of a smartphone back then. Otherwise, companies would have gone, never mind the antenna. We got this, it's better. And mm -hmm. Lord knows what's coming. But we don't know what's possible, what's the full extent of what's possible for us. So at 47, the issue of aging is irrelevant. And I hope to pass this gift to many guys. If you are a new, you're 37, you know. And I just saw Madonna, she's 57, and she's at her peak. And she's killing it. Probably be young. And then, if you're young, if you're in your 20s and so on, make no mistake, you're probably constantly buying into limitations that are slowing you down. And the last thing you want to be is 20 years in the future, looking back on it and think, oh, fuck. Okay, yeah. Done. yeah. What about guys in their early 20s who um, are struggling with dealing with uh, all the rejections that they're getting as they're going through the process? I always tell guys to enjoy the process, but some of them, they can become overwhelmed by girls not texting them back, the date's not working out for a few, months and months. How do you keep them motivated? Yeah, right there, you know, that's a quick fix. And that's like putting a Band-Aid on a cut. Mm -hmm. I prefer to go to the core and find out well, why is there a cut at the first place. So the frame of rejection is false. Meaning... In order for somebody to be rejected, they need to be two things. And we're going to invent a word, if you don't mind. So they need to be a source, like a rejector, and they need to be the effect of the rejecting. Now, who in the world has power over others and is an authority to reject them at the level of love, sex, and romance? No one. Now, if we apply for college, and somehow your petition is rejected. The use of the word and the concept rejection might be accurate to some degree, although you want to be a hustler and apply elsewhere and, and work. My first application to college was rejected. And then I asked again, and then I asked again, and then I got in. Okay, you got to be a hustler everywhere. But it's a false frame, so you need to start to dissect it. And I know if Ever since you grew, you were born, you heard about like rejection and it's ingrained into your system. Mm -hmm. So then when you hear somebody like me say there's no such thing as rejection, either you probably cancel it right away, go, oh, well, easy for you to say that. Or you find some appeal, but here's the assignment. You got to ask yourself, where did that idea, that concept, the wording of rejection come from? Did it come from guys who are thriving with it or not? And the truth is also another frame that's deadly that you need to kill is the idea of working or not. Mm -hmm. Instead, you make it work. And here's how it really works. If today you take a camera and you follow me down the street, what you're going to witness is not going to be very different from what you experience. Wait, you didn't notice me following you the other day, did you? It was you. Yeah, that was my. Uh, I went to L.A. from Vancouver, and, uh, and I hired a, a little I, paparazzi. Gotten such a kick of following me. I go fast, <laughs> though. I lose bodyguards in the crowd. I move so fast. <laughs> Vince, but this. I, I, okay. I wrap up the point, and I don't mean to be too lengthy in my answer. I have so many questions. Uh, yeah, so we're gonna move on, but I just wrap it up. If you follow me, what you're gonna notice is not much different than what you probably notice when you walk around, and I'm not saying. Uh, uh, you personally, Tony, I'm saying the general you, any guy uh, watching or listening yeah. or reading. What, but what you're going to notice is different. The different is my responses, meaning it's a blend of three categories. There are women that, for whatever reason, want, want no business with it, or they so they themselves stuck in their head that they don't even realize. Mm -hmm. so that is a technique I'm happy to share a little bit later. Oh, I want to know. Yeah. 
And then there are many are in between because the moment you decide, even if today you're brand new and you go, I'm gonna improve my reality with women. You're already ahead of most other guys out there. So it doesn't take long until you have a little more appeal, but you're unaware of your appeal. But for a woman, it's more pleasant than the guy who stupidly or shyly goes like, oh my God, you're so beautiful, or pretends to be a friend. You, need, yeah. you got a touch of game, you're already better. But they're in between. And then there's always those who are ready. Now it's how you process that that makes the difference. Okay? The lower category, I long for the day. A guy's going to go to a group of girls. And the girls are going to go, eh, hey, we're not talking. Oh, you say that to everybody. Eh, I have mm -hmm. a boyfriend. And the guy's going to come back and he's going to go, wow, those girls were not that social. Yeah. But no, what do guys, guys do? I got blown out of set. No, they don't get blown out of set. They blow things out of proportion. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. You, so you brought up some really interesting points. And what you just um, brought up there about women having um, blocks, I find in my own dating experience since I got into self-development, if I'm meeting a beautiful younger women, a lot of them they haven't read a self help book in their life, and I can tell that they're they should that that if they open themselves up to some of even my students, they would have a great adventure and they might even fall in love. But they feel like I feel like so many women are blocked, even worse than the men. How do you deal with women like that? I think that's kind of what you were touching on. Yeah, absolutely. Look, my hair is glowing. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm on fire. <laughs> yeah, you, <laughs> you should get some uh, artificial smoke coming out, like a, a phoenix or something. Magic. Vince Phoenix Kelvin. Lies. <laughs> uh, it's a very good point you're bringing up. And again, uh, really, your question is brilliant. Thank but you. Uh, it's simple. You must no longer be at the mercy of externals. And you got to know that we're all the same. It's so easy to get a little caught up and stuck up. And you got to monitor yourself. I walk down the street and I notice. Minimal signs of me starting to take things too seriously or putting on a facade. And then I just relax to bring that relief to other people. Mm -hmm. Now, what's important is to know that what you experience at first is not final. And that's where you start to graduate and become more and more of a man. So whatever a woman will do at first is not really her own true nature or higher self. And it's not really a response to you. It's her being in a fucking trance. Mm -hmm. So for that, I recommend the three gears. You say something at first and you know that they're probably not really going to register it. The three levels usually of any human interaction. You and I, we walk down the street or let, uh, suddenly some guy comes up to us asking for a cigarette. Yeah. Each one of us in different ways to different degrees. First, there will be a little sense of apprehension. Assessing what is this about, okay? So for some, it's really strong. Some women go, no, 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 no. Well, uh, sorry about that. While other women might just stay, smile, but deep down inside, they're assessing what's this guy, what does he want? You cannot buy into that. What I like to do is to kind of relax the body in a way that's not really detect detectable, but in a way where you can feel it, you're more at ease. Yeah. That's the way to induce comfort is to be more comfortable. Like a presence, you mean? Like just not... Uh, not. You know, for example, I started and I go, uh, wow, you guys, you look adorable. Cute like you are, you got to say hello. And one of them goes, what? And then I go, relax, open the body. One of the most inviting gesture is you know there's different rendition but mm -hmm. palms up like that like jesus yeah nothing to hide yeah. or like a hide uh like a host sorry like like uh you, hey welcome come on in mm -hmm. and then at that point you can repeat what you just said no i was just saying and you smile you soften your face i was just saying you guys are adorable so you know i'm pretty social i just wanted to say hello mm -hmm. now it leads them into their second gear their second gear they they understand what's happening, but they're still not solved. So they go, ah, oh, ah, oh, ah, oh, okay. And if you keep it at that, not much will happen. So then third gear is relax them even more and maybe give a little explanation. You go, hey, you know, in this day and age, a lot of people don't take the time to say hello. But you guys, you know, you seem a little more friendly than most. So I just thought I would quickly say hello. And by then they go, ah. <laughs> right? the same thing so here's something to me it's basic to me yeah. i started 
teaching that over 20 years ago, but for a lot of guys, it's new and it's, it takes time to change it. Mm -hmm. One of the false frames, <clears throat> false frame that the pickup community bought into is still polluted by the years of conditioning of wanting to please a woman and get her approval. The first thing that you do when you address a woman is a test. You know, you work so hard on yourself. You're going to spend the rest of your life with you. You are your own best friend, your own best resource. So you got to be vigilant. You cannot just welcome anyone in your life. You want to be good to all beings for as long as they're not extremely nasty to you. But it's, it's a test. So again, the, the frame must be reversed. A 180. The girl starts to go, uh, yeah, why are you asking? Mm, first red flag. This, this girl doesn't seem to be so bright, so in tune, so present. Yeah. Going to be stuck up and judge her too soon, but let's see what else she can do. Yeah. So from that frame, it changes a lot. Yeah. Yeah, you're putting yourself um, in a position where you're screening for value on your side rather than trying to prove your value to someone who doesn't want to accept it. Absolutely. And there's a randomness that you need to also be super patient. One guy came to see me for a private lesson. After half an hour of him trying to convince me that his problem was that interactions would not go far. And it was one of those guys who go, who goes, I have no problem opening, but yeah. my own book and standard, if you have no problem opening, then there's no buts after that. Mm -hmm. Until you resolve all the buts that come after, you got to refine how you open. And I don't even like the word open because it's too task oriented. Like you have to open the other person. Yeah. Me, it's just more about interacting, talking with them playing with them, teasing yeah. them, expressing myself, sharing myself with the world and find out who's receptive or not. I find in your videos, oh, sorry to cut you off. Oh, Keep sorry, going. yeah, I, I go fast. Sorry, my, I, I will shrink my answers a little bit. But uh, the this guy, after half an hour, I said, stop it. I want you to understand the randomness of what we do. So we start walking down the street and I gave him only one assignment. I said, whatever the fuck happens first, second, third, fourth, even if it happens 10 times, your only assignment is to slow yourself down at least, ideally refrain from placing any judgments. So first girl passes by, he says something, she gets closer to the wall, looks away, nothing. He was about to go, yeah, she was, I said, shh, yeah. let it be. Second girl, she starts to laugh, she goes, I'm sorry, I'm in a rush. He was about to make a comment. Yeah, everybody always so busy. They always... I go, shh, stand still. You don't know. You don't know what's coming up next. Third girl. That means we're not even out there for, for five minutes yet. He pulls her to a coffee place. I'm following him, texting him what to do. And he was missing a few pieces because he turned it almost like into a date when the girl was ready to kiss. He, he could even have said, hey, let's just go grab a coffee and pause on the way to the coffee place and start to kiss her yeah. and look at her and go, hey, sweetheart. He could have done her doggy style in the bathroom. Huh? He could have done her doggy style in the bathroom, maybe, of, uh, yeah, like of Starbucks. Yeah, public sex. <laughs> Have you done um, much day game public sex stuff? I know you're a kinky fucker, so I want to know, you know, some of your stories. I, I, I got I to gotta be careful what, what I say, but, mm -hmm. well, you know, I don't even know if the word is kinky. I think I go by, I, I bring a very spiritual element to it of uh, freedom. And one, one of my lifelong goals is, you know, all of us comes a point in life and you got to reach it fairly early on. Otherwise, it bothers you when you're older. Yes. Where uh, if people wait until they're 80 to, to start to realize, wait a minute, life is a passing experience. Mm -hmm. All that seems to matter so much today, one day will be gone. It's going to be memory fading and maybe one day there's going to be zero recollection of it. No, no fossil of it or however you call that. Um, and then you start to see. So in my spiritual seeking, I found people who really had such freedom and openness and and I, I loved it until yeah. one word came into play, S E X. Yeah. And those very same people that seemed so free started to shrink. And then I realized, wait a minute, 
every one of us is the product of sex. You walk around, if sometimes you feel like, will I ever have sex? Every human being, every bird, every little ant that you see, you're gonna go product of sex, product of sex, product of sex. Walk in a crowded, uh, crowded place, and it's gonna be sex, 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 sex everywhere. So part of it is, uh, to me, it's the final frontier. The world will really have evolved when we can follow the slogan from Hustler, relax, it's only sex. Yeah. And, and then all of the worst element of sex, people being forceful, people, people being critical, people depriving themselves, people uh, uh, settling for less than they can have, people obsessing about it, perversion and all of that will be removed because it's the repression that brings all those elements. That, you know? that brings and this question. My journey has also been sexual abstinence. You know, I would oh. not be a good teacher of sex if I didn't do that. So I did six months of sexual abstinence, including my very own hand. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's impressive. And I did it while teaching pickup and I did it while, while teaching pickup at AVM, the adult film star, um, convention in Vegas where I know a lot of girls and they'd be, oh, Vince, hey, you want to have fun like last year? Come to my room. And I'd be, not this year, my darling. I'm wow. Well, and what did that do for you spiritually or um, self-development Well, the first thing that it did, it's almost as if women could feel a new greater power in me. I remember I was in San Francisco outside of a hotel early in the morning wearing my sunglasses with a cigarette in my hand and I'm not preaching smoking cigarettes on the contrary <laughs> and a rock star drink and I was shooting the shit with a couple of homeless people up there and we looked totally gangsters. So suddenly it was still dark outside. A woman pushing a stroller with a baby in the stroller and two little girls with her passed and gave me the sweetest smile ever. Yeah. She felt safe, she could feel something, even though that should have been the least expected response from her. Huh. And then it also, um, it, it did a lot. And you gotta work polarity, you know, you gotta be careful. One of the first starting point for anyone is to work your polarity and go contrary action. Meaning, if you're a guy and you masturbate every night and you got so hooked to it that if we were to, to, to tell you, Tonight, you go to bed without masturbating. It would be a problem for you. You better stop that. Mm -hmm. If you're a guy and you've been told that masturbation was bad and so on, just fucking jerk off right now. <laughs> yeah. At the end of this, no, that would be a lot. <laughs> uh, and then you apply that. That can be one of your own best starting point and coaches. You walk down the street and you see two girls and you think, I already spoke to them. Counter reaction is what? Speak to them again. You pass by your place and you go, oh, no, I don't really like that place. Go in. You yeah. feel like you should text a girl and then you go, oh, maybe it's too early. Text her. And that will help you to connect with a higher level of intuition. Mm, so do the opposite of what your, um, no, I wouldn't say instinct, but what your, your story is, like what you think All you shouldn't do. Mm -hmm. What clutters the instinct. The instinct, it's almost like a room you're going to access, but... A lot of people put a lot of things at the entrance of that room, so you always feel like I'm moving in the direction of my instinct, but you stumble on uh, prejudice, on preconceived notions, preconceived ideas, false, false understanding. One thing that, that, that happens a lot is at an early age, we don't really have much conscious function. So something happens, like I remember there was this uh, little girl in my building. I must have been seven or eight. Her name was Claudia. And suddenly I see Claudia with her little girlfriends and I go, Claudia, you want to be my girlfriend? And they all started to go, <laughs> and they ran away. <laughs> now in my little seven, eight year old mind, I was devastated. I thought they were mocking me <laughs> and I thought they were hating me and that's why they ran away. As an adult, of course, the experience was so unexpected for them. They had no prior reference of what to do or what to say. And out of nervousness, they did two basic things humans do when they get nervous. They started to laugh and they ran away. Yeah. Funny thing is that years after that, I ran into that girl and she told me that ever since she had a crush on me. So oh I had God. understood it completely backwards. That's like Asian girls here in Vancouver, right? I have to do a little pre-talk for my clients. I say, some of the Asian girls from China, if you talk to them and you go direct, they might put their hand up to their face and giggle and run as fast as they can, and it's not your fault. It's a cultural thing, which is something I want to talk to you because you've traveled all over the world. I've seen 
videos of you in Europe and everywhere. Um, I'm not sure how many countries you've taught in, but um, uh, you're talking about uh, the, looking at the culture of North America. It's a strange place, isn't it? Because it's like a puritan coming from puritanical roots where sex, um, like you said, sex was taboo and suppressed, but yet we are living in a post-feminist society where sex is also um, seen as very positive at the same time. But where would you say is the most fun place for a guy like you to be? Because um, you seem really attracted to Hollywood. But what countries do you like? And You know, yeah, I love Hollywood. And uh, I also believe wherever I would be, I would start to grow and blossom. Mm -hmm. uh, not use any excuses or relocate. Here's what happened to me that was interesting. When I first started to travel, I love groups like Lairs or whatever they call themselves, meetups. And oftentimes yeah. they would invite me to go talk. And the first thing the leader would do would be pull me aside and go, hey, Vince, we love your stuff, but you got to understand here it's a little bit different. You know, <laughs> yeah. uh, uh, it's not Hollywood. And I would listen to what they would tell me. And I noticed that not in a dramatic way, I would still pull, I would still manifest for myself. But it would not be as much as I'm used to. And at some point I was with a buddy that travels the world with rock bands and he told me, you know what, we arrive wherever the fuck we arrive, we're rock stars yeah. and uh, we just fucking arrive and women violate all their rules. Married women, women who would never do that with other people, they do it with us. And I go, hmm, interesting. So I would hear it, I'd be, yeah, 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 sure. Oh, okay, I understand. One of the, the, the ones that's funny, it's on a video where I'm in Dublin. And then you hear the talk and one guy raises his hand very, very genuinely. I'm not criticizing, okay? Uh, I've been there myself. In my hometown, I used to believe that it was very hard to meet people. I used to believe it was hard to meet people in L.A. I bought into the shit as well mm. until I would awaken. And he tells me, like, girls are more repressed over there. And my own experience of Dublin was suddenly I have... An 18-year-old that rushes me and fucking kisses me. I've had a world record of girls like in their late teens, 18, 19. Then I went to this little art place with students, and this is filmed. And I kiss one of the girls working there. I kiss another one of the girls working there. Then I kiss all four in front of each other. Uh, and it was non-stop wild stuff like that. You've broken and your own prejudices. Experience what you expect and with people i remember i had phenomenal mentors through my life and uh, uh in working with tony robbins i was exposed to the work of schwarzkopf general schwarzkopf mm -hmm. and he did a spiel for us on leadership and his thing was to really lead is to see more potential in others than they themselves would see and i think it's a core element of teaching of healing to to be to Hold the space. Now, everything is a duality. So on one hand, you hold the space. And if you see an Asian girl going, hee, 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 you go, this is not who she really is. Mm -hmm. Who she really is is a woman with infinite potential. Now, she, she's free to make her own choices, but let's make sure it's her own choice. She's not responding like a robot. And at the same time, you adapt the touch. And you. Uh, the first thing I do, I would humble myself a little bit. And I would powerfully tease them as if I was even more shy. I would be like, oh, mm. no, please, don't look. <laughs> yeah. And whatever they do, you double it. Yeah? Yeah. If the girl goes, let's just be friends, you go, holy friends, you're going a little too fast for me. <laughs> yeah. Let's first get acquainted more properly. And if the girl goes, no, I don't shake hands, you go, whoa, whoa, whoa. Uh, thank God, because you know, you're a little forward, your body, would you, would you mind taking a step back? I'm not so used to human beings being that close to me. And then you go, I'm just fucking with you, you're adorable. Yeah, a little bit of push-pull, that's um, something that seems to be forgotten in a lot of the new... Oh, I got better than push-pull. Mm -hmm. Dual direction. Dual direction. Push-pull was a lot of work, and it took really a passion for hypnosis and that kind of stuff to master it. Mm -hmm. Most guys, their, their pushing was a little too strong and their pulling was a little too strong, you know, because it could be good pull push would be you talking with a girl at the bar and then you just continue to talk, but you genuinely take your eyes elsewhere and then you go, but you know what? But a lot of guys, they'd be talking with a girl at the bar and then they would turn around and give it 15 seconds and then go back to her and she'd be talking to the guy next to her. Yeah. 
or they would they would they would do like up down up down no real motion because they would arouse the girl and then go by to back to fluff talk mm -hmm. it's very advanced i have an entire course called sexualization on it and i constantly dig even deeper there's mm -hmm. not one month in la where we not, don't have a new free class on what i call sexualization dual direction is when your words go forward you go back a little bit with your body mm -hmm. when you go forward with your body you pull back with your words so notice it's moving in two directions so this way it gives the illusion of an interruption when in fact it's constant escalation mm. it's extremely potent and at the end you combine both at the end you go come here you boom okay yeah so a uh, basic example would be a lot of guys if they stay their interest or they go direct with a the girl they're going to go direct with the words and straight into the face and going to be wow you're so sexy that's a lot of energy going in me i'd be like hold it you're way too sexy yeah mm. and i pull my body away and then i go too bad we don't have more time and when i say too bad we don't have more time which is a takeaway i touch them or grab the hand mm -hmm. because if we did and I tell them what I would do if we did. Like that is, I've seen I've seen a lot of your older videos, man. So, uh, one of my one of my friends um, told me to ask you to make more infield videos. I think it takes a lot of bravery for you to put yourself out there like that, to make, put videos of yourself living this lifestyle. And you know, in my own life, it's been a little bit of a challenge being a dating coach, um, and I'm not as visible as you are. So that's really interesting. Um, you described yourself as a wounded healer, and I think. Um, the pickup artist label is it's good for marketing and it sounds pretty cool but I really think what you do is is you help people improve themselves and you help people heal and rehabilitate and get laid and have sex but how would you um, say that you were wounded before were you wounded before you became a healer or are you still wounded I think in all honesty every morning we wake up and again every morning we're going to be facing opportunities and crisis mm -hmm. and if we don't have a serious practice and also a source to check in you know like uh you're coaching a lot of guys so you're that source they come back to you to uh to check in and sometimes in coaching that's when we learn the most also my best teachers are the worst students i've ever had because mm -hmm. they make it so obvious of what not to do. <laughs> yeah Never do that. <laughs> sold us on that idea of uh, well, you know that uh, we can be superior what we should buy into is hey life is navigation you better have a seriously efficient system that you refine all the time and also we always set a standard in terms of oh look at those good people and bad people and it's fading but we need that to fade away even more rapidly because everybody's carrying their own cross. There's not one person today in America, in Canada, in Europe, any continent, Asia, Africa, you name it, that is not carrying a burden, mm -hmm. whether it's imaginary or serious. And even if the, your whole life comes together, then maybe the world is gonna go crazy or maybe the person that's the closest to you disappears. So mm -hmm. I've been a wounded healer, you know, uh, I have my first wife passed away when I was super super young and I didn't know how to process it so my mind was searching like crazy it was the weirdest thing ever uh, then I reached the peak when we released my first program seduction in action and then we put live links when I was nominated official only speed seduction coach on the planet mm -hmm for private coaching but we didn't think about what was gonna happen so suddenly within days Almost 80 people signed up for the coaching. 80 hours a week of coaching. Wow. And that was exploding and suddenly, boom, lower back surgery. And uh, mm. I then was given hope that it would be better right after that. I wake up from the surgery and it's not better, it's worse. I end up on a wheelchair and then I end up at UCLA Pain Management Center. And one day I wake up, like not wake up, open my eyes in the morning, but start to realize, wait a minute, I'm inflated, even worse than Elvis, and I'm on 16 different meds that the doctors gave me. 
I'm totally hooked to those meds. And they never oh, told no. me. They don't say, watch out, those could be addictive. And the list goes on. And we had Project Hollywood. It was a rise, Project Hollywood 2. You lived and in uh, Project Hollywood after the game. To, to release the book. And even in the book, you know, the whole community thought I was like losing it. And to some degree I was. But <laughs> no one will ever know what really went down. I mean, it was just, I remember just before I entered Project Hollywood, I was in New York. And I was playing with this girl who tell me, you haven't seen that show on TV, and we got that on video, mm. and she said, uh, I replied to her, I said, no, baby, I don't watch TV, my life is a movie. And like <laughs> yeah. the first song I went, and yours is just TiVo. Yeah. And she should have been the hip-hop kind of girl that would catch the line, but she didn't, and then I was uh. laughing so hard. But at Project Hollywood, it became like such a Hollywood rock and roll story. I had five different sources of people acting against me, including like notorious LA gangster. It was just... Insane, wow. insane. But it, it got me to, to really be free. And, you know, who cares about me and my stuff? Uh, you have your own stuff. So feel better knowing you have your own stuff. Don't traumatize yourself. If you wake woke up this morning and you're afraid of this, you, you're fed up with your job, you, you're wrestling with something, uh, it's all of us. So let's join forces and let's honor hierarchy. You know, you got a person like me who's dedicated over 25 years, coming back at it. Every time we thought, okay, that's it. He's done. I'm coming back. So, so take as much. Get as much as you can. And so on. The videos, last thing. I have a quality challenge. Okay. I have over 2,000 hours of infield video, but life happens fast. And uh, my schedule is so busy that what we would need is a team of editors to go through all that footage. I have videos from five, ten years ago. Uh, in a lot of countries where we didn't, uh, I was doing a series, Pick Up Around the World, and we did one in, uh, in, in New York, one in London, uh, a couple other places, but I have some in Germany, some in uh, 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 Prague, and, and other countries that were never released. So hopefully one day we get to go through all of that footage. And, uh, but, and then, yeah. always, you know, sometimes the best stuff happens and there's no cameras around. Yeah. It's not always easy to find somebody to film you. It's hard to get infield footage. It's not easy. Oh, no, no. Like, one thing I realized, you need someone that would have the balls to pull what you're doing. Yep. <laughs> it's so funny. I was filming with a guy from the Discovery Channel. Yeah. He gets there, and suddenly we're in a car. He's filming me, and then he gets out of the window without holding himself. We're driving fast on the freeway, and he wants to film the arrival in New York. And I go... Fuck, that's a badass. Yeah. This guy's going to get my infield footage. Yeah. And the cops pull us over because he's with his big-ass camera. And he continues to film. And the cops go, put the camera down. He goes, yes. And he continues to film. And I go, yes. I found the guy. Yeah, that's the guy. And suddenly, I'm with two women. And they go like, uh, we're mothers. Almost like, oh, uh, they're very sexy. They're super young. They go, yeah, but we're mothers. And I go, high five. Perfect. Exactly what I'm looking for two mothers with tattoos that was on my yeah. list tonight and they start to laugh and i go when you're laughing like that and i grab and i kiss them and the camera goes down wow what did he handle falling off a car dealing with the cops but he could not handle witnessing that because in his own reality mm -hmm. if it happened it would be like oh shit what's happening isn't it funny I, I always talk about how men used to be able to charge into battle or they can do backflips off a cliff if they're into sports, but you get them to talk to a pretty girl and their instincts uh, just take over the, the anxiety. And um, they just have to reprogram themselves out of it to realize I nothing bad's going to happen. It's also about properly allocating what the real problem is. Now, one thing that's easy to blame is ourselves. If you reading, watching, listening right now, and you've been the kind of guy you constantly demean yourself, you think you are less, you have less stop this right now because who you are is pure potential then it's easy to envy others but whenever you see someone doing something that you like you should be happy for them you should praise them and know that you too can do even greater things Excellent. and then it will be easy to blame women to blame your location to blame your culture to blame your upbringing but if we really and we shouldn't blame we should know it it's the fact, I think, that we live in a day and age where there's no, in most countries, there may be a few exceptions, and those people from those countries, usually they get a little tougher and they do more, you know, they're real survivors. Mm -hmm. um, when there's no immediate danger.
Like right now, the odds of suddenly I turn around and uh, the a suburb of Hollywood is attacking Hollywood and there's somebody with a gun or a sword behind me or a predator or a tiger just jumping on me or you are very low. Even yeah. if you slack off a little bit at work today or or you feel a little pissed, it's not going to be that your body explodes and your bank account is shut down. And even if that happens, your bank account or your job, you could always go and manage, you know. Uh, yeah. Like even homeless people in most big cities in America. My sister does a lot of charity work. She went to a part of the world where uh, there's so little chances because there's so few tourists that people will give money. Mm -hmm. That to get more money, those who are homeless make babies and then mutilate the babies. You can you just wear a to cut their arms to have a child there to have more pity to bring in. More. Yeah, yeah, it's horrible. That, you know, so even uh, uh, bless them, and it is very tough. And thank God we're not in that position, and let's help them to have greater realization. But even homeless in uh, in most major cities, America, Canada, and Europe, they they still at a at a pretty good place. So what's the real issue? We grew up, a fish doesn't know that's in water, in a place where we became comfort junkies. And it's not that we don't have it. We don't remember it. Mm -hmm. So then you need to look at the rest of the world and not judge them. But if you want more than average, you need to know, you need to kill average. Mm -hmm. Kill it. Kill it. I don't mean them, but what you need to do. Every time you witness an average behavior, despise it and go, never, that's not me. Still be friendly with the people, otherwise you would be worse than average. Yeah. Yeah? So somebody tells you, oh, man, uh, how are you doing today? Oh, you know, traffic. You go, never will I let traffic affect me. Yeah. I smile and count the car and cheer up people and do affirmations in my car. And then you got to rise to your own power, so you need a metaphor. My favorite metaphor is I wake up in the morning and I go, okay, Let's say we watch so many of those movies like uh, Alien attacking the, the planet. And let's say it's really going down. Suddenly, you know, we turn on the news and it's like, that's it. It's happening. Now, what would no longer be valid? If today, as you're listening, watching without freaking out, you imagine your city is under attack. It's aliens and they hate humans and they want to destroy. And boom, your neighbors are gone. And boom, the building next to yours is gone. Yeah. Would being tired, would not having money, would uh, your upbringing or any of that still be valid as an excuse? You would forget about all those excuses and you would tap into a power and a force and a dedication and a need and a will to survive. That would be stronger than ever. And you wake up every morning with that little metaphor and then you give thanks that it's not the case, that you're happy, and then you go through the world with that power. Would you now, use a... Step, the level that's challenging is that you are going, you're finally awake, and you realize how everybody else is dormant. Mm -hmm. So there's the pitfall. For a long time, I would do so well, but then, you know, you arrive, and you're about to copy your new book at the copy store. And you're so excited, and you work, like, nights after nights to finish it, and what you get from the clerk is, like, next step back I mean at first I was like what the fuck I can't <laughs> you come in my dream like this yeah. <laughs> but now I work with them and they are wonderful teachers because they will make you even more powerful you know they will help you access levels of forgiveness of understanding of compassion that are above and beyond um, there's one thing I wanted to do you know I also I heard a wonderful speaker today I go to a lot of spiritual gatherings and every time I can hear a speaker I, I, I study a lot. I'm on, in the group Beyond the Game, so every video I can watch from Mirage, from Okido, I learn always. Um, and some of the best teachers I've ever had, uh, like this guy who wrote The Power, uh, The Psychology of Winning, Dennis Whitley. Uh, I saw him in his older days, and he arrived and he said, I have written a lot. I know you benefited it from a lot, but I humbly have to say that I realized at an advanced level that I still know very little. Uh, so I, I, I like to bring that element in it because it's easy to get. And uh, I would like to ask you, since you're a coach, to, uh, if, if you don't mind, to bring me one piece of information today, one gold nugget, and uh, to 
you know, to enhance my reality. You said some wonderful things already, and your presence in itself is a gift, but... Uh, you honestly, want me to bring something to help you with the day? Yeah. Well, oh, my one God. One thing that you've been working on, one thing that's one of your little signature trademark or so on. Yeah, sure. I'll show you something I've been doing. So I woke up with a bit of anxiety the other, the other night. And forgive me, I got to relocate low battery, and I don't want to miss it. So oh. uh, I'm plugging right here. Okay. And I'm all ears. Um, I woke up with some anxiety because I heard a rat in my wall. It woke me up in the middle of the night. Somehow a rat got into my wall, and I'm thinking, well, I have to kill this rat now, and I've been putting it off for a long time, and I don't want to kill it, but I have to. And that brought up all this anxiety about money and some dating issues and my business. And so I, I just sat up and I just started writing. On, I bought this child's, um, child's notebook full of uh, paper and I just write, well, this is a day game product I'm working on. And uh, random, that came out of my head in one night. So it's basically like... Laundry, everything that was giving me a little bit of anxiety, I wrote down on here just so I could visualize it and see that it's not really that big of a deal. My anxiety is unwarranted because I know exactly what needs to be done. And because it's all here and visualized now, um, it just made me happy to get it all out. And I wrote four pages of this, this stuff. So I'm sure you do something like this, but just writing your anxieties and ideas down on big pieces of paper, I find it it's a lot more fun and valuable to do it kinesthetically than on a computer. Beautiful. Yeah. Beautiful. Thanks for sharing this with me. No I problem. Love it. I no love problem. It. Where to do it today? Because I can't paint, so for me to write it all down, it's almost like painting. I get a big fat pen and it's it makes it like a fun activity, kind of like a, something I would do if I was a child painting a picture, but it's with my ideas. I love also, you know, women are so much more okay with saying it like it is. Not every woman, we don't want to generalize, but uh, there was a little study at one point, uh, a silly one, and I don't know who, uh, who conducted that or the validity of it, but it brought up a good point. Uh, women in a bathroom, in, uh, in the cabin, no toilet paper. Immediately, dong, 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 hey, do you have toilet paper? <laughs> Ask the girl next door. Yeah. Guys, starting to look around, oh fuck, what do I do now? <laughs> and yeah. the rest of you would just think, okay, let me ask the person next door, or they would make such a big deal of it. So don't keep it on the inside, at least yeah. put it on paper and uh, express it. So It amazes me how, like, when you start writing down your ideas, because you're a very creative person, I can tell that it amazes me that there is no end to creative ideas. And some people, when I find they get stumped in life on what to do next, or they feel like they have no passions, I, th I think that's crazy. And I say just grab a big piece of colored paper and just start writing everything that comes out of your head and you'll see how creative you are. I think you're uh, really a gifted gifted teacher and I'm glad for this time, Vince. Um, before I leave, is there anything you want to promote or tell the world about? I want to promote you, gentlemen. You have power. <laughs> yeah. And uh, uh, here's what I want to promote. I want to promote first um, fair trade for you. We live in the day and age of quick fix. Everything has a plus and a minus. When I first started, I heard of Jim Ron. I had to place a phone call, pull out my credit card, travel to wherever he was speaking, and if I wanted an audio program, the only way I could get it was to order it, wait until it would arrive in the mail, and play it. Mm -hmm. Now, I can Google Jim Ron, YouTube, and watch it for free. Yep. That's amazing, but that's also really, really, really fucked up. Why? Because at some point, I wanted to spot talent out there. And any time that I had a guy, I was, somebody would tell me, oh, this guy is really good with girls. I'd be, hey, maybe that, that's the next guy that can be one of my trainers. Any guy that I invited that way, it was as if I cursed them because they found no value in it and they quickly regressed and stumbled and they had a brief glimpse of fame, even worse than a wimpy erection. Mm -hmm. So uh, we're going old school a little bit and you got to be fair, 360 all directions. You got to be fair to yourself. You're not going to get really good with women by just reading stuff on the internet or reading a book, you got to show up and whether it's in Canada that they will take a boot camp with you or you come to America, you have 
to have the full force experience. Now, I know what's going to come up. First thing is going to be time and money. But those two, you got to master them. Otherwise, anything else you're going to do in life is going to get affected by that. Right. So you got to take that leap of faith. And if you think you cannot get the money and make the time, you're lying to yourself and you're signing a blank check. First real education I had, I called this guy Marshall Silver. His seminar was $3,000. All I had was $1,000. And I asked him for a discount. He said, I don't have time for that. Mm. Life won't give you any fucking discounts. Yeah? Mm -hmm. You know, a person on a deathbed cannot go, oh, uh, can I stay a little bit longer? Uh, yeah. <laughs> go. Make $2,000. Manifest it. Uh, hurricanes and so on. So the universe is not going to be like, oh, please. <laughs> uh, I mean, you, you can reach that. It has that element. Yeah. But it's not the only element. So I had to hustle. And he told me, here's your seminar. You're going to come up with the money. Mm -hmm. Or you're not going to show up. Yeah. Or you're not going to come to the event. I wanted it so bad, I came up with the money. And what a lesson that was. Okay? And I tapped into my power. And I borrowed a little bit here. And, and, and I, I grabbed a little job. And, and I changed something. And I, I said, no more beverages when I go out. And... And then I stayed two, three days without eating, and, and I made it. And that, to me, was just like, wow. I could even have not showed up. So, gentlemen, don't buy into those bullshit excuses. And then, also, you have to realize that you, you got to honor. Uh, a guy the other day told me, can I have a free session with you on the internet? I go, go to the doctor today. Go to the store and ask if you have, can have some free food. Yep. Why is this important? It's not important for me. I'm so overly busy that every day I decline opportunities to help people because I cannot take them on board. Yeah. Okay? But it's important for you because otherwise you are nurturing the cause of your neediness with women. You're a powerful man who can provide for yourself and if you want something, you got to go and you got to get it. And then don't go in for the quick fix. It's always going to elude you. Go for the long run. Universities, they're set four to eight years for a reason. Mm -hmm. Okay. So uh, you can you can reach me. Uh, go to globalslr.com. That's our website with Rash Di Bazaar. Uh, we have so much coming up. And November 18th, I'm going to be on CNN with Lisa Ling for the seduction game. And it's a beautiful perspective on the pickup community. It's a very upbeat show, and she's a beautiful woman who uh, is a very bright feminist. There's many types of feminists, but she's bright. <laughs> yeah. And uh, she recognized the value in what we offer. So her wow. voice is a powerful voice. That's and amazing. That gentlemen, there will be less hiding. And then I'm also a big advocate in this day and age. There's less and less racism. They, of course, there's still always less and less prejudice. The world is becoming more free. Finally. The gay community has been allowed to marry, and that's a beautiful thing, you know. Yeah. But who's the, the black sheep getting the shit? PUA. So what yeah. do guys do? They pull away like pussies. Mm -hmm. There's those who constantly mislead in the definition of pickup artist. Uh, pickup artist is anything that you want. For some, it's a very limited thing. For me, I always think of it that way. A great mentor was Osho, the spiritual teacher, and he once said with regards to spirituality, if it doesn't make you smile, if it doesn't make everything a little bit easier in your life, if it doesn't make people happier around you, you probably have a false sense of spirituality. Mm -hmm. So if it doesn't make you really happy and fulfilled with women, if it doesn't flow and feel natural, you probably have a false sense of what being a pickup artist is. I'm unbound as a pickup artist. Mm -hmm. And then think about it. What are you doing for future generations whenever you back out of it you either demean it or you just go, uh, oh, no, no, we, uh, I'm sorry, you know. Uh, uh, oh, yeah, I wrote this book years ago, but I was only a journalist. Ah, 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 ah. No, have some balls. I'm a PUA. I'm a man. I love women. I got balls. I didn't create my balls and my dick. They were given to me by a God force that believes in evolution. And without it, it's the end of the human race. Men are lazy. Thank God for sex drive. And thank God for the real tool. Because women, you never want to make the mistake of fearing the wrong guy. The guy you want to fear is the guy with no skill who's going to apologize and pretend to be your friend. The guy you want to embrace is the guy who's going to have skills. Because skills leads to choice. If you're a woman and you go, no, 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 I really don't want to. I'm going to wish you well, empower you, send you some good energy, 
and walk away with zero resentment. And then, if you're open, I'm going to handle every aspect of it better. So never fear the PUA. Praise the guy that has the honesty to tell you, and I'm a guy, you know? Yes, I'm looking at you because part of my wiring is thinking you would be so awesome to fuck. Yeah. I don't hold you to that because you're a free woman and I'm a free man. But at least I will voice it rather than looking at you and then looking away like a pervert or pretend that I'm going to be a friend or go so indirect that I mislead you and you realize later on that it's not my intention. I'm going to be a front and then you do whatever the fuck you want with it. It's your choice. That was a great last message. That was an Academy Award winning speech right there, Vince. No, thank you. Well, What are you going to do for the rest of the day? Uh, the rest of the day, I got, uh, we're doing sessions with a guy who went to India for five years. He's a doctor, a professor. He's kind of uh, very business-like. So we're, we're a, a good pair, and we teach together, mm. and we, we tune in pretty much every hour uh, on the phone, and I do hardcore incantations, ma magical statements, prayers, ma and he does mantras in the background. And we do it to explore just how far can this go. And then at 4 p.m. I have a gentleman that's coming all the way from the East Coast uh, that's going to do three days with me. We do one day today. Tomorrow we have the event with Arash and uh, Saturday, Sunday, Inner Alchemy. And then I do two more day, uh, days with the guy. So I'm about to spend a total of oh, wow, uh, six days of teaching nonstop. And I catch up with women at night. And then uh, I'm putting all my girls on hold this weekend because I'm going to be in field like extreme hours. And, oh, uh, wow. There's going to be a lot of new girls, so. Amazing. And I got to do my bed. I didn't do my bed this morning. <laughs> the bed's important. I make my bed every day. If I learned anything from pickup, it was how to clean my apartment and make uh, and make my bed every day because you never know who you're going to bring home. Yeah, yeah. And here's what, one last key point, you know. For, for the guys that have uh, paid their dues and are kicking ass out there, you know, well, I'm, I'm very moved by, by you and I look forward to do more and know that the door is open on my side because I'm very impressed with your your energy, your delivery, and how you approach this. Uh, but it's easy for it to get to your head. It's easy. You fuck a lot of women. You have that energy. Uh, I, I admit, I've become at some point a sex addict where, mm -hmm. where it would never be enough. I would fuck six girls one day, and I'd be like, oh, uh, well, at 12. <laughs> six girls in one day. To nine, and I'd be like, oh, my God, only nine. What's happening to me? Yeah. Uh, but, uh, but sex is good, and you, you don't go any extreme. But the words of the late then well, when Dyer, he would always go practice enlightenment and then chop wood. So mm -hmm. you practice stardom, being powerful in the world, and then go home and do the basic task. And maybe uh, make a little lady's day by saying, wow, what a lovely scarf. Or, uh, you know, contribute, be of service. And, and that balance will, will really power you. And uh, it's going to be so, so yeah. I'd like, like to do another interview with you. I would like to do another interview with you again one day because I'd really want to talk about um, fame game, social status, uh, dealing with being in the media, and and, and these hey, other you issues. Know what? If you want, let's do this. Uh, since we got acquainted and I'm very talkative today, and uh, uh, let's do a part two next week. Sure. Yeah. Same time next week, we're on. I'm going to honor Scott so I can be on the phone with him. <laughs> okay. Blessings. Thanks for showing me the thing. I will. Uh, where's my journal? Here's my journal. Yeah, <laughs> I'm sure you had. I'm sure it's not revolutionary for you, but ah, you know what? Uh, every day is a revolution. A a anything that's a mistake. I never fall for that. No, no, mm. I hear everything as if it's the first time that I heard it because the first time that I heard it, I probably wasn't at the right place. Mm. <laughs> Namaste. <laughs> <Not a> mistake. <laughs> <laughs> Great. I'll talk to you again next week, Vince. Thanks a lot. Blessings. Epic. Thank you. Epic interview. Bye.